Hello, welcome back to Evil Genius Props. My name is Mike and I'll be your Evil Genius for today. Uh, what we're doing now is continuing on with our Summer of... <sighs> Fine. Summer of Cheeky. Back in 2018, 2019 maybe, uh, as Disneyland was preparing to make room for the Star Wars Land Galaxy's Edge to open up, uh, they embarked on something called Project Stardust. Uh, what this was, was going through basically making more room in the park. So there's extra room for people to walk and uh, sort of move through the park without getting stuck on things. A uh, big part of that was just widening the walkways. Why we're talking about this for Summer Tiki is that the Adventureland sign over the Adventureland entrance from the main hub uh, relatively famous. There's a big arch sign that says Adventure Land out of bamboo. It's got like heads, like tiki heads on it and torches and stuff like that. They had to take that down while they were widening the pathway. So in the meantime, they put up a temporary Adventure Land sign, uh, which looked an awful lot like a sort of a, a shield to turn sideways. But they had that up for a while while they were working on this. And I saw it. I was like, that's kind of really cool and something I could make and put up on our back patio, which I lovingly refer to as the Adventureland Terrace. Well, stayed there for many years. Did well. Uh, I bring it in in the winter, but uh, we had a storm roll through recently and uh, blew it down and broke it, which that happens. So we're going to take this opportunity to remake it, uh, hopefully be a little more sturdy and uh, be able to get on through and uh, do a new one. So, let's go to the workbench. All right, this is the original sign I made. Uh, honestly, for my abilities at the time, I'm kind of happy with how this turned out. But, and it lasted me a good four or five years outside. But because I made it out of plywood, as you can see there, it's starting to delaminate a little bit through there. I had to attach something to hang it from. It just it, it's lived its life and it's moved on. So what I went and did was get uh, a lot of hardware stores. The big hardware stores will sell you already pre-edge glued pieces, uh, not unlike the project panels of plywood, but it's actually get this edge on. Solid wood as opposed to laminate, so it's not going to delaminate like the other one here did. So what I'm going to do is take one of these and lay this on top just to uh, do the outline because I am actually happy with the shape in general. Look for a good piece on the board to use. I want to avoid knots and the like, so... Alright, so I'm going to go cut this chunk out and then take it over to the bandsaw to finish it up. I've got the rough shape cut out. I'm going to just round over the edges a little bit uh, using a router with a round over bit. Uh, just sort of knock down that edge, get it rounded over. All right, nice rounded over edge for the outside. Just going to give it a quick sanding now. Uh, Nothing real in depth. I don't need to get it really very smooth. I just want to knock down some of the edges uh, on the underside, smooth out the top a little bit before I paint it. So go over it real quick with the sander. All right, next step is just to apply a quick coat of paint and then let that dry. 
So for such a small project, um, I just got a, a sample size of paint. And specifically what I wanted was an exterior rated. Uh, so if you're doing this inside, you could probably get away with just acrylic or even spray paint. Uh, but I wanted to do an exterior rated paint. Uh, it's going to get covered over for, with spar varnish anyway, but just to make sure it stays nice and safe. Uh, so it got a, an exterior rated. Let's just paint that on real quick. Normally I hate painting wood to look like wood, which is kind of what we've done here. Um, I suspect the original sign wasn't wood, but that's beside the point. But what annoys me, there's nothing that annoys me more than I make a prop out of wood, show it to, to the director, who then says, okay, let's make it look like wood. It, it is wood, but I get what he's saying. Usually at that point I try to stain it rather than paint it. This time, however, I did paint it with basically this is the unpainted, this is the painted. The color is about the same, but you can see that I've taken care of some of the the knots and wood and things, that, uh, wood grain that would otherwise stand out that wasn't present in the original model. So, to get the Adventureland part on there, uh, I resorted to what is becoming my standard uh, technique, which is I printed it out on paper and then we're gonna tape it down onto there. And you'll see this just fits exactly the way I wanted it to, which is just barely from end to end. And let me show you a quick trick on this. When you're joining them, two things you don't wanna do. You don't wanna get tape where you're gonna trace over it, because the idea is we're gonna trace over this with a pen. And also we don't wanna have two layers on a line that we need to trace. So we don't wanna have overlap we don't want to have overlap where there's lettering because then you have to push harder to get that line to come through so our next point here our next step is to lay this out get this right where we want it and then tape it down and then once we have it taped down we're going to take a ballpoint pen whether or not it works doesn't really matter because the idea is we're going to trace along the outside here and push hard enough to set that that line through into the wood. I'll tape it down and then we'll get started. All right, I've taped it down. Uh, and fortunately, the masking tape matches the wood color exactly, so you can't really see it. But you don't want to skimp on the tape. We don't want this to move around. But beyond that, it's just taking your uh, pen and tracing along our letters here. And again, we want to push hard. We're almost scribing like if it was metal. If this was foam, I would probably use an X-Acto knife. Uh, that tends to work better on the foam than the pen does. But in this case, on the wood, grab a scrap piece. It's easier to sort of drag in and get it sort of to indent enough to be able to see it. That's all we want to do is be able to see it so we can sort of have that transfer that line over. Now, in this case, I'm just going to use this as lines to paint against. But you could absolutely use this to lay out for carving. Uh, I've done that with the Dremel where you, you trace it and then you sort of remove it with a Dremel. Uh, it's the same technique I use on foam.
All right, those should all be traced out. Uh, I can see them pretty clearly from here. See if you can get them to pick up maybe on some, a uh, little bit there when I get some raking light on it, you can see those. But they're there, they're visible to me, which is the important part. Uh, so I've got that laid out. That's my layout now for painting. Just a question of using the right paint to match up with the sign. They did a, a sort of a dark red, and looking back at the pictures, uh, they actually did it as like a fade from a dark red to a almost black at the bottom. I'm not sure I'm going to mess with that. Uh, I feel like there's too many opportunities for me to mess that up and have to start over. And frankly, it's my sign. I can make it how I want. So it's just a question of getting the right color red. So I'm going to take a look, see what I have. And then we can get started on that part. All right, I reviewed my red paint, uh, which because I'm a prop maker uh, run from blood red to rust uh, and settled on uh, a favorite of Bob Ross, actually, a lizard and crimson. It's a pretty, pretty close match. Not perfect, but close enough, especially since I'm on the East Coast. People who actually saw this in person aren't likely to be in my on my patio. So now we're going to go ahead and uh, just sort of paint this on, using these lines in here as our guy. Alright, that's the, the first coat, and it's kind of looking a little blotchy, uh, so we're going to do a second coat on that, but you get the idea. So, Alright, the lettering's done. Uh, maybe not the greatest up close, but it looks pretty good at the distance you're actually going to be seeing it from. Uh, so our next question is how to do the design work on the top and bottom in particular. Not sure about what I'm going to do on the sides here yet because my lettering, I don't have the little fins off on the side here and don't feel like making those because I'm pretty sure this one was fiberglass so it's probably easier than dealing with wood. In the meantime though I am going to look at these guys and what I did last time I think is sort of sketch those out with pencil and then went over them with them with some black paint so we're going to try that again so i sketched it out down here and then we're going to take some black paint and go over that so that's the bottom part work on the top bit here. This one's maybe a little bit more complicated. So I'm gonna have to work out sort of how this one works out.
All right, I've got that sketched out. Uh, again, you can't really see because it it's in pencil, but we're gonna go ahead and paint over that. So I think what I'm going to do is take this shape with the three lines there and just sort of put them, in this case, above and below the lettering to fill it out and have that same feel without having to do that little fin. All right, it's painted up, it's all dried. Now the original sign has some sort of bamboo, so it's like mounted on a bamboo stock. I don't know what you call that. Um, and then there was sort of a red, red and orange raffia fringe above and below. Uh, now when I did it originally, I had put them on both sides. So it was like a cross versus just straight up and down. Uh, what I've taken done this time is taken the old red and orange off the other ones and, and put them on, like pulled it off two of them to put it on here, and then we're going to fix those on the back, just sort of in the up and down orientation. Uh, and I'm going to leave them uh, with this older sort of look that's a little bleached by the sun. Uh, I just sort of like the look, actually at this point. So I'll maybe do a little spot of hot glue to hold these uh, in place. It held out pretty well last time, so I'm not worried about it not. And then what I did last time was uh, glue and then apparently some small nails to, uh, to mount in there. So I'll do something similar this time. All right, and there we are. I gave it a uh overall coat with a matte clear coat to help keep it protected and uh, overall pretty happy with how it came out particularly the adventure land part uh, less excited about the decoration bits but uh, it is what it is anyway not bad for a quick little project to fix the one that broke but that's it for this time be sure to like and subscribe thanks for watching